Welcome to another Regen chat from Align Farms. I'm Claire Buchanan and I'm joined today by Reese Roberts and Kiri Roberts. Uh, so yeah, we'll get right into our chat, just following up from December when we had our last focus day. So yeah, Kiri, what has there any been any big learnings uh, since December? Uh, yeah, so the biggest learning has probably been the pasture management on the Regen side. Uh, just because last year when we hit February, um, we were at the start of February, we were in a really good position and then it declined really fast when we got all that rain. So this year we kind of just took each week, week by week, um, starting in December and it's worked really well. It has been a little bit, um, means you're kind of always on the edge on what's actually happening. But from a team perspective, we've been able to really plan um, and make wish lists on for wanting to do silage or things like that. Um, and that's just what we've done each week since December. And it's worked really well. We're in a really good position right now for feed. In fact, we're um, potentially cutting another paddock of silage for the region um, next week. So um, that's been awesome. Uh, you know, from that part, and then obviously the conventional side, you're always learning um, ways you can you can um, you can deal with pasture management on that side. Yes, yeah. And Reese, do you have anything that you learned? Yeah, I'll certainly. Um, there's been further emphasis on the importance of pasture management, which is nothing new in the dairy industry, but certainly getting that right. Um, making sure pasture covers don't get too high but also having a good solid base that you can rely on without the um, use of urea is important um rightly or wrongly we've seen elevated pasture um uh, covers in february which is uh, on one hand really really good to make sure we're in a good position uh, but also has proves challenging around milk production per cow in particular so it's re it's a real balancing act between a setting up for late lactation and be maximizing the day-to-day -day, um, production of the cows so that's been um that's we're still learning in that area but pasture pasture management has been vastly improved to last year and i guess it's not so much around the day-to-day -day. i think that's definitely been managed well but it's more around some of those macro um, rules or guidelines that we set last year were incorrect and we've we've learned from that adjusted and really really happy with where we sit at the moment nice yeah and you're feeling confident about late lactation feeling a bit better than last seasons yeah definitely definitely for the region like um couldn't be in a better position right now i've got so many options on the region side the downside is on the conventional side i don't i actually <laughs> um need more feed so it is very frustrating to um be cutting silage on one side and not um not be able to just chuck the other herd in there um <laughs> don't worry i've asked race if i could do that <laughs> it was a firm no <laughs> yeah bit of a tease <laughs> Um, all right, so yeah, has there been any highlights from the last few months? That definitely the feed yeah. has definitely been in a in a better position. I know on a conventional and a traditional system, having too much feed is um, usually something farmers don't like because you don't feel as much in control. But I know as soon as this autumn hits, um, that's that side's going to shut down. So being in this position um, and you know getting out to longer round lengths is um, definitely so it's two like two completely different systems uh, when you get into this time of year. Um, but yeah, just that and then the milk hasn't actually been that bad. I've been pretty content. The girls held well in January, so that was really cool to see. Nice. Yeah. And how about you, Reese? What's the highlight for you? Well, I guess we'd have to. Um, start with the veal day being a highlight I guess you know 15 minutes afterwards I probably said to myself I'd never do that again uh, but on reflection um, I think it was a highlight to get circa 200 people to an event on a cold miserable day in, in the middle of uh, Westerfield uh, I think has to be a success um, there is certainly a level of interest out there I don't think um, anyone come to the field day or left the field day with a distinct plan that they were going to reconvert their dairy farms. However, I think we, where we are starting to get a lot of positive feedback is people are starting to appreciate what we do, which is quite um, comforting that, look, we are on the right track to 
giving uh, farmers um, other other tools in their toolbox. So that was probably a highlight for me. Um, I guess, yeah, I, I can't think of anything on the farm that's been a distinct highlight to date, other than, yeah, performance has gone well and, and it looks like we're going to have a have a, a very competitive season between the two um, two sides. Yeah. All right. So then, yeah, on the flip side, is there anything that was disappointing to you the last few months? Um, so no, not until Monday when we did the scanning. Um, so we scanned and my six week in calf rates were horrific. Um, not something that I had planned and absolutely gutting because from my perspective, we did the once a day all plex system where you pretty much don't spit the cow out onto twice a day until the system allows you. Um, and it's a minimum stand down period of 10 to 14 days for that cow. So there is a bit of loss in production when you do that. Um, so we did that. Condition score has been really good. Um, and condition of the cows, obviously the region wintered on uh, the diverse crop um, and they looked really good. And there wasn't there's not too much transition between that, unlike your um, kale and beet and things like that. Um, and yeah, so. I was I was pretty gutted. I thought that we had done everything by the rule book. Um, rumination stayed really well with the girls and we tried to um, keep that as high as we could. But it just it just wasn't enough. Um, bloods that come out really well during uh, pre mating, or well, during calving, pre mating, and post mating. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't enough. So we need to look in that into that and see what's actually going on where our areas. Um, the heifers actually didn't do too bad. Uh, so yeah, we just need to have a look at that. The the region side um, in the three week and the six week both were higher than the conventional. We're sitting around 5% uh, higher in calf rate, so that is good. But we um, just are finalising all the graphs now, so we'll get that all online um, after this. Cool, yeah, and Reese, how about you? Anything to add to that? Well, certainly mating's been uh, been pretty gutting, for, I think, for everyone, to be fair, but that, it, um, that is what it is, and um, we've got to take the learnings and um re go again on that one um and i think it, i don't know if this is a disappointment or not but i am becoming increasingly um alert to dock pressure um we're probably you know i, I don't yeah i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure if it's a season thing or it's pasture openness thing or something but we're seeing things happen on our farm in the dock space that we've never seen before. So we need to be on alert to it. Um, I wouldn't say it's a disappointment. It's more of something that I am acutely aware of and uh, addressing. And as I say, I'm not quite convinced whether it's good or bad, but uh, at this stage, I'm probably landing in the bad camp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, it's definitely uh, getting frustrating, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah, it's just probably um, something that I would have hoped we would have started to get on top of so fast to date, but uh, appears to be getting worse. But in saying that, I have spoken to a new, numerous uh, farmers that have said, hey, look, this is probably being one of the tougher years for Doc, um, just with the moist conditions and uh, more anaerobic soils. So maybe we're just, um, you know, jumping to conclusions, which uh, is a strength of mine. But um, yeah, so far, so far, I'm just a little bit, I'm alert to it, put it that way. Um, more more um, commentary will come of that over time, but yeah. But yeah. yeah, that's probably my two just at the moment. All right, yeah, it's definitely something we want to keep an eye on. Um, so yeah, Kerry, do you what's on the cards for the coming month or two? Um, yeah, what do you have planned on the farm? Um, so just to uh, slow those rounds down as fast as I can. Um, potentially probably put a bit of supplement into the um, conventional silage into the conventional to slow that down. The region uh, have the cover crop still to graze, so I probably need to start grazing that soon because it is, it is, um, you know, we drilled that in, in November, so, um, you know, probably need to get into that soon. So we'll probably start doing that within the next few days and start trialling them on that and push the round length out hopefully cut a little bit more silage so that we've got some options. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Start getting rid of cows, 
um, if we have to, and then um, drying cows off also if we have to see how it goes. Anything to add to that, Rhys? Uh, no, um, yeah, business as usual for Kerry, she'll she'll deal with that. Probably at my um, one thing I am then starting to focus on is is setting budgets for next year and how do we maximise the opportunity that we have between the two sides. Certainly, um, feels like we're heading towards a more compressed um, season next year with um, a bit of a deflation in the income line and and still some elevated. Uh, cost lines so uh, yeah just making sure we've got the right stocking rate um, and and got the right inputs going in to to you um, to maximize the opportunity so there's a pretty I don't think there is a, a line in the budget line that's not under review in our business at the moment like everyone so we need to go through with a with a uh, fine tip comb and have it have comb and have a look and and see what we can strip out. Some of the learnings we've taken out of the region, can we apply them to conventional and vice versa? So that's probably my plan for the next week, is, uh, uh, next month, sorry, is really focus down on that and, and try and maximise it. It'd be great to um, see if we can, you know, get it, get um, region ahead of conventional next year. Um, it's been on a sliding scale back towards being equal, going to be very close to equal this year. And next year we might be able to pull ahead. Let's see. But um, that's probably the, my focus is in there and Kerry will be doing her day to day, getting her round lengths out, as she mentioned, and, and doing that well. So getting cow condition right. And I guess a lot of with the mating results, you know, some people um, or some some times you hear a lot about um, identification, you know, that, you know, that's that's mating. It, it starts on the 20th of October. But, mating you know started last week really like it's around getting cow condition right getting the wintering right getting cows into the right mobs so that's probably got to be a focus now is focusing on you know how do we review um where we've got to on that result and how do we improve that next year starts today really um are you expecting to change the stocking rate from this year Oh, I'm not too sure. I'm kind. Of, I think we need to do some sensitivities on it. But my my in in layman's terms, I feel we could probably milk more cows on the region side. Um, but hey, look, that may not be the greatest decision financially. We need to need to really go through that. But uh, I believe at this stage, Kerry might correct me if I'm wrong. We are looking at milking a few more cows next year. We plan to. Um, yeah. Obviously, with empty rates we got, we, <laughs> that doesn't help us at all. Um, but, you know, we plan to. With the opportunity we've got with Longfield going winter milk, we can potentially buy some more cows off there. Cool. Well, yeah, we'll get into more specific discussions now. So, yeah, we've touched on mating a bit, but if we want to go into any more detail on animal health and what's happening in that space. Yeah, so that's been pretty good. The... Um, We've had minimal treatments, which has been awesome. A uh, bit of mastitis in there. No, no staff, um, unlike last year. So that's been awesome for the team not to have to deal with those 20-odd cows. Um, so, no, other than that, it's been all right. You do see a bit of a hike when we get um, some wet weather events or anything like that. Not that we've had many. Um, but I would say the next few days will play a, play a part in that. But other than that lameness and that, the boys have kept on top of that really well. Um, and I think I've got like six girls, seven girls in the in the um, in the peno mob at the moment. So no, animal health has actually been has been really good. But it's definitely something we need to look at because as um, you know, we when we get into our culling and things like that, because you know every year our animal health costs go up more and more. Mastitis wasn't really something that I used to really budget on uh, because it kind of just did its own thing and you didn't spend much money. But now it is starting to um, creep up quite a bit. Uh, so it would be nice to get on top of that and just maybe cull a few of the, that, the, those things out. So, yeah, that's about it really, though. Anything to add in the animal health space, Reese? Yeah, I don't um, – I'm not too sure where Kerry's thoughts went on this, but – you know, Kerry has culled, um, done some management culling in the last month or so. I think it's probably 20 or 30 cows being culled out on, on management or production. And Kerry was probably alerted to the fact that a lot of them were coming from the region herd, which we're not too sure if that's cause or effect. Um, but where, would, where did you get on that one, Kerry? Is that still the case? 
We, me and Kate are going to have a good look into this because we're just trying to see. So pretty much what we did is um, we culled on a few factors um, just because I needed to get numbers down. And it was more numbers down on the conventional side. I didn't really want to get rid of any regen girls. So we went through like cows that were doing under one milk solid um, and then any other like animal health cases that we just didn't want repeats of, things like that. And unfortunately, um, most of them were regen, not conventional. So that was slightly frustrating because here I was trying to get rid of conventional cows and ended up got getting rid of regen. Um, so I'll probably do another 10 or so this week of straight conventional. But yeah, it did start to alert me that um, I guess some like how like why were they? Was it just a fluke that they were all regen or is there actually something happening? And I don't actually think um, I don't think like there's nothing we could have done in regards to the split because we only had so many um, things that we could go off to split the herd. But I'm just wondering if, you know, my questions are, is this hindering the cows with milk production? Um, is it affecting other things? The downside to this is that, like, opens up the biggest can of worms in this trial because we're now effectively like, is it fair? Is it not? Um, but reality is, is this is, it's real. So um, I think at the end of the day, no matter like farmers deal with this all the time anyway so I think people can relate to that but yeah it has started to open up some questions so we'll be doing quite a bit of graphs and um, analysis on this me and Kate and just seeing what we, what we can do the um, we can't we can't actually action too much because we can't exactly um, bring in a new herd for region and start yeah. again because then it becomes a unfair for convention you know so yeah. it's just something that I just picked up and I was a little bit um, shocked on um, and wanted to look into more. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, I guess, how Natahu splits their herd and if they have similar outcomes in this space as well, like once another farm's doing it. <laughs> yeah, well, well it I just depends that if they do it. Like, they're that they're not. Just, well, they've just got two farms. So that's really, right. I, I don't think that it's anything. I, I think that the trial is very, very fair. I think it's probably cause, and effect, uh, cause or effect here um, is, is something that we're doing in the regenerative system, putting, you know, doing something to those animals differently that is, you know, making them produce less milk. Or we need to look into it, you know, like mm -hmm. are, are cows, are there cows in a herd that aren't, suited to diverse diets. I don't know, I'm just speculating here, but I think definitely from my perspective, we just need to address that and mm -hmm. um, and go into it. I, don't, I, I have no qualms that there's not, it's not a fair, I think it's a fair trial. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, you've just got to look I at know, it. I know it's definitely a, a fair yeah. trial, but I'm just saying. Um, it's like, is yeah. it historic health issues or is it caused by yeah. regen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, you're, you're always going to have, um, like this year, if we, progressively cull more of those regen poor performers like last year we might have progressively cull more of the poor performance in the conventional last year so then that on on statistically the average just mm -hmm. would be there'd be more in the region and then vice versa the next year it might go the other way so i think it's just like i 100 agree with kerry that she needs to look into it and address it but i, I don't i don't think it's a fairness issue uh, i think it's, it's we, we've done a good job in keeping this as fair and transparent as we can yeah yeah Right, yeah, like um, if you look at um, mastitis, we've had, I think we've had more on the conventional side this year than what we had last year. So, um, yeah, it's definitely um, changing every season. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, anything final to add about mating or we'll... No. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, well, we'll post <laughs> our results in, in the next few weeks when we have them for everyone to have a look at. Yeah, they should be. I should be able to get them by the end of the week, the initial cool. ones. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, so we have touched it on it as already, but anything to add about pasture management or pasture performance as well? No, no. The, it seems to be going well. As always, it's just still a um, hard doing one thing on one side and another thing on the other side. Um, but no, other than that, it's... Um, always a work in progress. Anything to add, Reese? 
Um, not so much around. It hasn't. Well, I don't think we've drilled in there at Clearview, but at at our property at Mount Summers Hinterlands, we've used a product called Splice, which is a four-way cross with two types of fescues, annual ryegrass and perennial ryegrass. And um, I know it's only early doors, but really, really impressed with that product. Um, that seems to be a really good hybrid between some summer hardiness, but also, um, you know, we've, we've seen calves do really well on it, which was something that I probably wasn't expecting. So that's good um, from a partial perspective. But, yeah, you know, I don't think there's been any game-changing um, developments in the pasture space since last time we chatted, other than, you know, the, the blatantly obvious that pasture management is, is super critical. It doesn't matter what you do. It is very, very critical, and it's about getting that right. And, you know, probably the big learning this year was isn't so much around how well we're doing this year. It's probably how wrong we got it last year with our kind of preconceived ideas of what we should or should not be doing. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that, that's been really, really hot. If you look in our comparative graphs this year, Pretty much all the mistakes that we made last year. Like one thing that is great about this trial was, I feel that we have learned pretty quickly and got on top of some of that stuff, um, and which is good to see. But on the flip side, yeah, it really highlights that last year we got a little bit fixated, and and you could argue that was ninety nine point eight percent me um, got fixated on what those kind of preconceived ideas were. Um, so yeah, you know, I've got to look pretty hard in the mirror. So yeah, that was good. But we, um, I'm pretty comfortable with where we sit at the pasture management space at the moment. We, I think we're we're learning quickly and failing fast, which is always good. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, anything to add in the supplement space? You said you've been hoping to cut silage this week. Yeah, hoping to cut a little bit more silage. Um, How I much have remember. you cut so far, roughly, if you can remember? <laughs> I think there's 42 ton on the for the regen side, yeah. And I've just we purchased 70 odd ton um, for the conventional side, and that is instead of us feeding maize because we're doing no crop. So this year we're doing no um, autumn crop for the conventional side. We did I just regrassed a paddock, um. So I just got to be a bit more mindful of that at the moment. The conventional side, um, due to the lower lower um, covers, they are getting four kilos of grain, uh, whereas the region girls are only getting I think it's one one point five. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's where we're sitting at the supplement um, space. I'm hoping that for the region side, um, weather dependent, that we actually don't need to get into that silage for quite a while. Um, at least another good month, but we'll just see how it goes. If the weather stays like this for now, then we might have to. But um, yeah, currently, currently it's in a good space. Good, yeah. Anything to add, Reese? Um, yeah, well, one thing. I, this is probably me just being grizzly, to be fair. But across the whole business, I probably feel we feed way too much grain, and um, and. Yeah, that's just me just having you my know, I agree to, with that. <laughs> yeah, to rent over. Um, secondly, I probably me and Kerry in a group from the North Island went over went to the diverse paddock yesterday and um I it's starting to senesce and lose quality. I, I kind of have been thinking um today, I wonder if we're better to cut that for silage and put that in the bank and let something grow in behind it maybe. But um Kerry can have a discussion about that, and then she's got a bit more supplement on hand, but that may or may not be a good idea, but let's discuss that offline. But that was just something I was thinking around the supplement space. Yeah, I'm sure Quigley's will love to um, silage a sunflower paddock. <laughs> I'd say they'll be happy with the work, to be fair. So I think, yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah I, we need to take that offline. That was just something that I've been thinking this morning, is I wonder if that's another option just to cut it off and put it in the stat. Um, the the individual that we had on farm yesterday did raise not a bad point when I on reflection was uh, my view with those big setup crops is you know if you ha if you grow you can only ever harvest five ton with cows so if you grow twelve ton you can only eat five ton if you grow seven ton you'll graze five ton um, and he said well if you grow a twelve ton crop you're probably better to solid it and he's probably technically right there is that that's one way that you can harvest probably ten or eleven ton and then feed it out so it may actually be the best option to run a mile through it after this rain and just chuck it in a stack and um, utilise that in late lactation might be a better strategy than trying to push round lengths out when we've already got high inflated covers. So, 
I guess there is the added benefit of having the animals graze that and leave the residuals in the paddock, etc. So yeah, it's just trying yeah. to figure out the best approach. Yes, bang Maybe for we a do buck. Half and half. Yeah, I was thinking half. that. Love a good trial. Yeah, we do half <laughs> half of it the solid, half it will care. I don't know. Yeah, I'm yeah. just speculating here. I haven't, I haven't brought this up with Curry, so I need to chat with her about it. But that was just something that's been going through my mind. Yeah, yeah. definitely something to think about. Um, how has it been going in the irrigation space? Applying similar to both sides? We um, Irrigation's kind of been all over the show. It's kind of been a start-stop um, season, I've found. There hasn't been anything where we've just been going for weeks on end. Um, so it has been a bit funny. You kind of are always checking what the soil moisture is sitting at um, and whether you're on or off and you're, you're sometimes only on on the bottom and not at the top. And it's been a little bit all over the show. So from a um, regional conventional side, I there's no difference for me personally. Yeah. It's just been, um, you know, it's just been kind of whatever whatever the moisture has been sitting at really um and i don't notice anything different not like what we did in the first year i think it's because of the um the the those cover crops is where you definitely notice you don't need the irrigation but i will say one thing i forgot to say about um so down the back right down the back of the farm those paddocks um, up against the river always struggle in the summer doesn't matter how much um water you can put on they just it just always struggles down there uh, and I had been deferring a couple of paddocks um, here and there where when I could in January, and it worked really, really well. And it was amazing how much feed I could grow down the back of those paddocks um, from deferring it. I think the cover of the soil just allowed it to not dry out. It stayed, it had the moisture stayed in there um, from when the pivot went over or we had a bit of rain. So that was awesome to see that those down the backs there, they can actually grow quite a bit of feed um, if you just give them a little bit more time. So definitely, I actually replicated it on the conventional side as well. One, because that is our longest, uh, furthest away paddock for the conventional side. So I re replicated the same. It didn't do 100% the same. It didn't grow as much. Um, so I think the just diverse species played it definitely plays a part in that. But that was cool to see that you can actually um, make a change. So whether you um, well whether I um, fenced those back bits off and didn't graze them um, straight away, like when we we're in peak peak round legs, um, and and waited until the next round or something like that. But yeah, definitely something um, and good to see that we can grow that feed down there. Yeah, it is a good learning to come out from that. And yeah, I guess um, hopefully next year we have a more standard irrigation season so we can get a better um, yeah. idea of the differences between the two systems because I think the last two years have been unusual. Yeah, yeah, it's been a little bit like, I think last year we just went every third or fourth week we had a big dumping of rain. <laughs> uh, so we didn't do much irrigating, irrigating there either. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we've got this nano bubble on trial happening on um, pivot four. Reese yeah. might have to explain that a bit better how that works because I don't. Yeah, so there's a trial happening on one of our farms uh, on one of our pivots that we we need to we'll talk about in due course. We don't have enough information to talk about that at this stage. So I think we, it's just we're, it's quite an exciting trial in my opinion and something that we will be opening up for. Um, to everyone once we start getting the results through. But as I say, it's, well, as Kerry mentioned, it's only been on for a couple of weeks and um, early doors are, in, there's some intriguing results coming from it. But certainly I believe it's the only pivot globally and there is, a, um, you know, we've certainly seen the early battle scars have been the first. So we are just working through some of those at the moment and um, really, really well supported by the trial. So it's in partnership with, with nanotech, uh, NPI, and ourselves, so so far so good. Uh, but once, yeah, we, well, I, I can't really comment on much at the moment, other than that it's that it's functioning, and we haven't started the trial. So yeah, yeah, yeah it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we'll get around to the team now. How has the team been handling things? A bit yeah, easier with second year. 
<laughs> it's definitely the business as per usual. Um, always the pasture management is always going to be um, tricky for them. But in saying that, like I said, we kind of just took each week or 10 days as it come and just made wish lists of um, silage paddocks or um, paddocks would like to defer and things like that. And then as we come around to them, we made a call on if that's the right thing to do. So we just got into a routine of doing that and it was really good, made it made it good. And it was quite good to for the team to be able to evaluate as we went, um, made them think about what was happening for the next 10 days and what it was going to look like. So yeah, other than that, the team are um, in good spirits. Nice, glad to hear that. Anything to add, Rhys? Uh, no, other than the fact that next week there's quite an exciting development happening on farm that I think will be a really good reward for the team. They've put a lot of hard work into that. So hopefully um, they you know, feel really proud about that opportunity and, and take that with open arms and, and feel that their um, contribution has been appreciated and reflected in that. So uh, that's exciting. But now that they, you know, it's always good to see the team out there smiling, doing their thing and showing real passion and care for the for the business and the property. It's um that's good, I guess. Um yeah, I think next week will be good for them. So optimistic. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, yeah, do you guys have anything additional you want to share about the trial before we wrap this up? No, I think that's it. Cover our bases. When we finish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess one thing that we continue to um, to just like you know it's something like there is a platform here to add value to the industry, so we're always interested in feedback. And I guess it's one thing that we we constantly get feedback on is is you know why don't we do this and why don't we do that or why aren't you doing this and why aren't you doing that and uh, one thing that we are acutely aware of is that it's probably getting to the stage now where we're more interested in knowing what happens if we don't do it rather than what we happens if we do do it. So I guess, you know, a trial like this probably only happens once every decade. Um, you know, I don't want to, I don't think any of our team want to sit there in five years time going, you know, we, we trial region for two years and it was challenging. So we did X and this was the result. We're probably more interested in knowing we trial this for five years. We didn't do this and this is what happens if you don't do it is more important than what happens if we do. So mm. most products or opportunities, you know, the people selling you that will do that research. So we don't want to do it for them. We're probably more interested in what happens if we don't do it. So if there are, you know, if there are any other, other things that people think we should or should not be doing, we're certainly open for suggestions and around um, how we could maximise it or do small trials to add value to other businesses or all the industry. Certainly, interest to hear. As long as it doesn't put untold pressure on the management team, then I think oh, we're open to doing anything that helps the industry. Um, and if there are any suggestions around how we could present our data differently, or improved, or comparing, or you know, there's a lot of comments that we aren't region enough and we're not conventional enough. Well, you know, that's challenging to overcome. But if there's ways that we can use some of our wider data in our business or something to help, then we're open for any suggestions. So we're, we are all ears um, in that space. But just to clarify that we're probably more interested now in what doesn't happen rather than what does happen if we if we add something to the system. So good, happy. Cool. All right. Well, we'll wrap this up then. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And yeah, as Reese said, if you have any questions or comments, just reach out to either Reese or myself. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs>